I tell you, she was the sweetest boy ever. She had it all. And then she meets up with this internet geek online and bada boom. What the hell was that? Why... why does this movie exist? Who thought that a simple computer game from 1998 required its own 82-minute film? With a six and a half million dollar budget, no less. Everybody get jiggy, we're going to the resort. Blah, da, 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 he, blah, da, 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 ho. So this is Elf Bowling the movie. The Great North Pole Elf Strike. Just, uh, <laughs> rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? This film came out in 2007 and features the voice talents of Tom Kenny. That's right, SpongeBob and Ice King are in this movie. Uh, uh, kind of. No one sucks the life from my penguins except me! And maybe polar bears, because that's just nature, Gunter. This movie is a hot mess. They took a simple concept and stretched it out to the point where the film becomes confusing and contrived, all for the sake of cashing in on a property that is well past its prime. Most kids today have no idea about the game, so why would they have any desire to watch the movie? Even then, the film has little to do with the original source. Do you remember pirates in the video game? Or talking Stonehenge heads? Or magical powers? The directors of this movie are Dave Kim and Rex Piano. Rex has directed quite a few films, but they all look pretty bad. Dave, on the other hand, has more experience in visual effects, which is clearly his forte. Not sure how these two found each other and teamed up, but the final product is not so great. There's nothing finer in the seven seas than a good old fashioned mutiny. The writer for the movie is Martin Olson another person who has an extensive filmography. His resume includes Phineas and Ferb and Rocco's Modern Life. I guess the question that I can't get over is who thought that this movie was a good idea? Was it the directors? The writer? Some producers? Tom Kenny, was it you? No! For all we know, it could have been the studio's fault. Maybe some out-of-touch suits thought that this was a smart idea, since the kids love the video games. From 1998, there were actually two studios involved with this movie. Film Brokers International, uh, and The Great Highway Company. Uh, this isn't going to be fun to review, is it? Well, at least Waluigi's in the movie. <laughs> Waluigi number one. All right, so the movie starts off with this disembodied voice telling us that we don't know jack shit about Christmas. Ho ho ho! So you think you know how Santa Claus became Father Christmas, eh? <laughs> well, think again. We then see a pirate ship called the Filthy Ho. I'm sorry, uh, the filthy toe. Hold it down, you stinking swabs! Put all them crates of stolen toys in me cabin and make it snappy, you barnacle butts! I've a teensy question for yous. Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Ah! We're, we're not even that far into the film, and I already gotta do a recap. So what this movie's trying to tell me is that Santa and these pirates, they steal toys from kids and then they sell them back. <laughs> Man, that's EA levels of evil. Also, take a shot for every poop and fart joke. <laughs> so it turns out that Captain Santa feels bad about stealing toys and he wants to give some of them back to the orphans. Can I be the first Not one to Not them. Make His heart's in the right place, but damn is he stupid. He just drops the presents off in the ocean. The chances of somebody finding this stuff is, like, impossible. You're just basically polluting the ocean. So, as the name of the movie implies, there's bowling involved. It's time for bowling on the main deck. Don't forget to grab your balls. We're then introduced to Santa's brother, who is quite the lowlife and troublemaker. Dingo, assemble the suckers! I mean, crew on deck! Anything you say, my dear sweet brother. Oh, you fat, mangy bearded blubber bucket. Excuse me? 
Is, is this Avatar? Also, why is a tropical pirate ship so close to the North Pole? Oh my god, that title. We then see this elf snowboarding like he's straight out of rocket power. The elf stumbles across the brothers and uses a palantir to thaw them out. Are you cracked? Never thaw out monsters. Oldest rule in the book. Ugh, these elf characters already come across as unpleasant. And I feel that's gonna be the case for the entire movie. Their tone, their sass, ugh. And this poor guy sounds like he had a stroke. They look like hairy monsters to me. Uh, ah! Ah! Holy shit, Santa's strong. <laughs> Excuse me? I know that jig, it's a pants on fire fandango, key of F shot. Excuse me? So Santa and his brother Dingle try to get on the elves' good side and lie about who they are. Hey, you two wouldn't be pirates now, would ya? Pirates? <laughs> what gives you that idea? Wow, uh, that treehouse looks like it's right out of Kids Next Door. Coincidence? I don't know. Oh, Double poppins are toys. <laughs> what a surprise. The elves make toys. And this catches the fancy of Dingle, even though the movie never tells us why these two are so interested in toys to begin with. Like, why do the pirates collect toys? They never say why. And then there's the question of why elves make toys. Well, here's your answer. We play with them. Oh, okay, yeah, it makes complete sense. And then they store the toys in mountains. And that one. And that one. Holy jingle bells, lad, there must be 10 trillion and counting. I know that this is a fictional universe, but 10 trillion, really? There aren't even 10 trillion stars in our own galaxy. So just let that number soak in. 10 trillion and counting. Liar! So here's the main question of the movie. How did elf bowling even become a thing? Well, this is what they tell us. Uh-oh. Call my lawyer. Really? <laughs> That's how it went down. We love having our ankles broken. Uh, do it, do it some more. Well, well it's uh, me favorite game, lad. <laughs> bowling, uh, elf bowling, that is. <laughs> ah, ah, there it is, there it is. If I can trick this Lex into conjuring us up a ship, we can hunt down them scalawags what made us walk the plank. <laughs> Are you with me? Isn't it great? Santa was originally an asshole. Uh, what are they doing? It's a surefire sign they like you, Whitebeard. <sighs> Take another shot. Presenting the best pastry chef in all of Elfton, Griselda. Ooh, Whitebeard, you're such a big one. She just had to say it like that. Oh, Whitebeard, you're such a big one. Brother, you keep your hot strudel in your pants. Excuse me? <laughs> Whoa! That is one hell of an innuendo. <laughs> Could you imagine the looks on the parents' faces who are watching this with their kids? <laughs> and now a talking streetwise penguin. Can I interest you in some hot mittens? They just fell off the truck. Beat it! <laughs> So according to this film, that's how Santa and his Christmas traditions came to be. First, there's Rebel, who's in charge of packaging. Yo, yo, when the presents need wrapping, I'm the one make that happen. My feet start tapping, my hands keep a clapping. Oh, oh my god. Of course they make the one black elf a rapper and a one-note character. Such a progressive movie. Just raise it! And it's that elves need to be happy. Their hearts must bring with joy. For it is only a happy elf who is able to make toys. Of course there's a song. But never fear, for I have the solution to all these woes. A formalized agreement. And this is how it goes. Ugh, a contract. That was already written up before Santa arrived. 
Okay. And I quote, condition proceeding to all obligations made here in a state of high morale must be maintained with no chagrin or annoyance, irritation, exasperation, constipation, or malady. Holy shit, these elves should just go ahead and form a union. So the elves and I began an enterprise that was destined to change all of history. And as an added bonus, the elves' magic bestowed immortality on the Dingle and me. <laughs> ah, that's great. Santa's immortal, and humanity just has to deal with him throughout the centuries. Love was in the air like the scent of fresh strudel. Wait, hold on. So, according to this movie, it took over 1400 years for Santa to get married to that girl? Jesus Christ, dude. We've got to split up Santa and Lex so I can pull the old switcheroo and take over Christmas. Ah, so we finally discover the main plot of the movie. It only took about 25 minutes, and we're back to bowling. <laughs> ah, these elves. Keep breaking our ankles. We get free health care through our union. To claim it, a strike to claim it. And he got it! Who do you think you are? I am! The toy counts off by six billion units. Six billion? Blistering barnacles! Who's in charge of the inventory? I, I don't understand why Santa's afraid about toy inventory. You've got 10 trillion toys in your arsenal. You should be set for quite a long time. So Dingo throws down a challenge for control, and they have a bowling contest. And already our two athletes are in the middle of controversy. Santa's having a beef with his manager, and Dingo's having a problem with his warm-up. <laughs> Uh, we got puns. We got puns, people. Of course, Dingle cheats, and the penguins in Madagascar disguise themselves as elves. But then you got the actual elves booing at Dingle, so there's this biased bullshit everywhere. If only there was an inanimate object that could be used that serves the purpose of being knocked down by bowling balls. Imbeciles, get ready! What? Is he a giraffe? It's like Dingle's using the old stub and stretch technique. We see his ball glide towards the gutter. How is this allowed? This is so brazenly fake. Uh, Again, cheating. Wait a minute, Dingle cheated. Oh, thank God. They aren't all completely stupid. Santa wins! <laughs> and that's the movie! <laughs> uh, I wish. But seriously, this story has these moments where you feel like the film is over, but then it just starts right back up again. Hey, look, boss, I can do your mom. Uh. Oh, oh, another classy innuendo. I love a mutiny, backstab and betrayal, yeah, that's for me. Ah, we're getting a villain song, too. Uh... Lex, in all our years, we never been short ten toys, let alone six billion blister toys. Again, you guys have more than enough. So Dingle plants evidence on the main elf in order to create descends in the ranks. What the? Gunpowder? First you lose count of the toys, then you short the machines. Now you blast me, girlfriend Strudel! That's what she said. Dingle tricks Santa, who goes out to save his elf friend. And apparently, Santa has the ability to create matter out of nowhere. I like how smart Santa is, rowing out into the ocean to save his friend. If only, if only he had a way to fly. But, hmm, that doesn't exist. So Dingle sabotages the workshop, and all hell breaks loose. I love this part in particular, because it's so on the nose, and everybody takes it for face value. All elves stink? Especially Lex. Sincerely, Santa. The partnership is over!
Mind you, there's a trickster that's been on the island for over 1400 years, but the elves are just that gullible. So Dingo takes control of the operation and moves the elves to Fiji. Yeah, this is actually in the movie. The elves hop on the plane and fly off to the island. We then get this joke about gremlins and <laughs> Grizzly Adams, which no child would understand. Come on, it could have been Grizzly Adams too. <laughs> Let's talk about this elf joy meter for a second. We got mega bummer, bummer bum, okay. <laughs> Med, okay, fine, not sure what that means. Happy joy, and then ultra merry. Jeez, what's after that? Happy merry plus! She was the sweetest boy ever, she had it all. And then she meets up with this internet geek online and bada boom, she's off to Cancun for tequila and body shots. <laughs> what? Oh my god, that penguin has titties. Where were you on Noah's Ark? And I'm pretty sure that he said tequila body shots. This is the best kids movie ever. We then got some random lady who just so happens to be on the same flight to Fiji. She overhears Dingle talking about how he's going to be rich. And then she makes her move. <laughs> I mean, the one with the billion dollar looks. <laughs> Ooh, that cleavage. Talk about your stocking stuffers. Eh? Yeah. Boo! I am funny. Let's see no wedding ring, ridiculous clothing. I'll bet you've never kissed a girl. Wait a second, is she implying that Dingle is a virgin? Cause if so, <laughs> he's been a virgin for over 1400 years. <laughs> uh, eat your heart out, Steve Carell. <laughs> wow, he just went for the kiss. Mm, you're such a hunk, <laughs> but I don't date without medical records. Medical records? <laughs> what? This movie does not give a damn. Check if you have festering sores, blistering boils, oozing lesions, unexplained body odor, hellacious halitosis, etc. Charming. Ah, manic depression. <laughs> Welcome to the club. So this lady has her heart set on being the new first lady of Christmas and decides to join forces with Dingle. Oh, lassie, you petrifies me peg leg and makes me heart pound. Ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. <laughs> they finally make it to Fiji and then we meet this native chief character. Character. And a one, and a two. What even is this movie? And who is that? The fire goddess from Moana? You know who you are. So Strudel finds Santa, and their love for each other frees them, I think? That or it's one hell of a case of heartburn. Santa then takes off to go confront Dingle and set things right. He also leaves his wife stranded on the glacier in the process. Wait, don't leave me here. Bye, honey. And what a surprise. Dingle tricks the elves and hypnotizes them into working at a sweatshop. And this next part just blows my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, we get a song about the upsides of slavery. Slavery makes the world go round. It's easy enough to see. I would pay top dollar to see Tom Kenny's face while singing this song. Slavery throughout history has made many a scoundrel well to do. So it turns out that the elf never needed the crystal ball to use magic. <sighs> You're starting to get the picture, elf boy. Ow! Dingle then gives life to these Stonehenge heads. And for some reason, they talk like surfers? <laughs> Why the hell not? Awesome dingleness. Yeah, dude, like you rock. Uh, I still can't get over how Santa talks like a pirate. It's so bizarre. Try me cutlass on for size. So Santa and the main elf finally meet up and reconcile. This is like a chick flick. Except instead of smoking babes, dude, it's a munchkin and a fat guy. <laughs> I'm gonna take what he just said and post it as a review on Amazon. Whoa! Awesome booty! What did he say? Awesome booty? Whatever. This movie has officially jumped the shark. And here we are with the final conflict. 
Dingle takes off with a sleigh, but Santa jumps into action. Uh, what? How about if I kick your butt and take your job, okay? <laughs> what? He can't hold on. He's too fat. Ah, my middle school gym teacher used to say the same thing. <sighs> and so did the high school one. And the college. Fortunately, the elf uses the force, and Dingle falls out of the sleigh. Dingle then throws down one more bowling challenge. Though at this point in the movie, I completely forgot that bowling had anything to do with it. But here we are, a bowling contest, on an island. Also, this is just a repeat of what has already happened before. More proof that the film is bloated and should not exist. Yes, yes, come on boys, come on! Yes, burn baby, burn! You know, yeah, it's just simple physics. A little lube and the ball catches on fire, cause that's science. I, Santa is the bomb. <laughs> How does he not see the fuse? It's like right there in front of you. How do you not smell it or hear it? And how does the explosion not knock down the elves? I am so done with this movie. So the exact same thing happens like last time and Dingle gets caught cheating. Bola, bola, wait, Dingle oh. cheated. And Dingle flies off on a rocket to the moon. <laughs> okay. What about me? Hmm? I was supposed to be the first lady of Christmas! Oof, those are some jiggly boobs. Hey, it's like Reginald. I've got a Herculean bond. The North Pole is repaired, cause magic, and all the kids get their Christmas presents free of charge. Lex, you did it! Alright! Oh. <laughs> Man, we could use that in Detroit. Oh. My. God. This is in such poor taste. What is this movie? At least we're not Detroit. We're, we're not, not Detroit. Detroit. Yo -ho -ho. And a bottle of. <clears throat> he means Merry Christmas to all. Oh yeah, don't say that. We wouldn't want this movie to be inappropriate now, would we? And on that note, the movie is over. Such a gutter ball. A truly moronic move. And we see his ball glide towards the gutter. Well, that was a movie, I think. All right, let's go over my five points. First, the story. Again, why was this made? Nothing of value was created. They took a very simple concept and somehow overcomplicated the damn thing. For the record, it's not impossible to take something simple and create more story from it. Angry Birds is pretty straightforward as a game, but they were able to make a somewhat competent film with the concept. But Elf Bowling? Not even close. Hey, you two wouldn't be pirates now, would ya? Not but humble pirates. Next, the editing. Eh, it's alright. Nothing bad, nothing great, just med okay. After that, there's the dialogue. The movie is rated PG, and I think that's well deserved. It has its fair share of adult humor, which honestly caught me off guard. I was not expecting to hear about Santa's dick in a movie about elf bowling. Rather you keep your hot strudel in your pants. Ah, <sighs> the voice acting. Tom, why were you in this movie? You're a pretty wealthy guy, and this film was released right around the heart of your SpongeBob days, and that does not even include all of your other roles. Was the money that good? Or was this a passion project? One of my followers on Twitter, by the way, follow me on Twitter, said that Tom Kenny mentioned this movie at a convention, that he got the job and found himself in a crummy neighborhood, and he had to record in a rundown apartment. Now, I understand that voice actors have to take jobs that are less than desirable. Work is work, so I don't hold that against Tom. It's just so bizarre. Eh, at least he and everybody else did an alright job, despite the weird characters they were assigned. Santa ain't coming to town! <laughs> and finally, the animation. 
honestly, it wasn't that bad. I wasn't in love with it, but the artists who worked on this film knew what they were doing. But I don't understand why these characters have a clay-like texture and design. I typically like stylized animation and designs, but this just comes across as strange to me. Not bad, just strange. Also, elf nipples. Requirements seem simple. Overall, this is probably the most competent movie I've reviewed so far with Christmas crap, but that puts the movie in an interesting situation. The Christmas tree was hilariously bad due to how strange and terrible its quality was. I've never seen something so pitiful before. We come from the mares. The Nuttiest Nutcracker, despite its ugly characters and wacky story, was still fun to watch since it was so outrageous. To its credit, it held my attention. And that's because bad films can be fun to watch if they are genuinely bad. It can make them endearing in a silly way, but Elf Bowling does not fall into that category. On a technical level, it was fine. I mean, I'm not in love with the visuals, but you can tell that a professional level of skill went into the animation. It basically comes down to the story. I don't care about the characters, and I don't care about the story, and that makes the rest of the film a drag, especially since it's over an hour long. Yeah, there are silly moments, both intentional and unintentional, but it's not enough to make this movie fun. Be good, be bad, just don't be boring. And that really is the main problem with this movie. It's long, confusing, and boring. Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Ah! But next week, we come face to face with the final review of the series. A movie that claims to be comparable to Toy Story. Spoiler alert, it's not. Ain't no way, there ain't no way, there ain't no way, no matter what you say. I've had about enough of this Christmas crap. Bill! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. There was supposed to be a sequel for this movie called Elf Bowling, The Great Halloween Pumpkin Heist. Call it a Christmas miracle, cause that movie was canceled. <sighs> Thank God.